Steve Fuchs Ray from DCGrandMaker.com here. I'm in the middle of Times Square in New York City to do a bit of a test with GPS watches. Uh, now, first off, I'm sorry if you can't hear me very well. I'm using the GoPro's mics um, just so I can run with this nice and simple. And the GoPro's mics, as most people know, aren't terribly awesome. Also, I've got a bit of a cold, but let's just get on with it. Uh, so, I've got three GPS watches. So I've got Garmin Phoenix 5 Plus, um, the regular one, not the S or the X, just the middle of the road one. I've got the Sunto Spartan Trainer Wrist HR. $279 GPS watch, $274, whatever it is. Uh, this is like a year and a half old or so. It's kind of my favorite. I'm using this as opposed to Sunto 9 because honestly, the Sunto 9's GPS isn't really super refined yet. Um, it's brand new. This, I get the best GPS tracks out of that using a lot of GPS comparisons. And then on this wrist right here, I have the Koros Pace. Uh, that came out a couple months ago or so. It's like a bit of a startup brand of sorts, um, 299 bucks or so. All these are multi-sport watches. Um, with the case of the Phoenix 5 Plus, I'm in GPS Plus Galileo mode. That's their latest, greatest GPS mode. And the other two, I'm just in their best modes they have. Uh, so it's kind of like whatever they got with one second recording for both of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and simply run out of Times Square. I'm gonna run down Broadway, which will spit me out of Central Park. I'll do a loop of Central Park and then I'll come on back. Um, I'll stop actually right at the road to end of Central Park there as it uh, butts up against the mess of the city there. Uh, so I won't actually come all the way back down on Times Square. And we'll look at the tracks afterwards and see like where things worked and they didn't work. And one of the biggest catches is usually just getting GPS signal to begin with. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to start that right now here. So I'm just gonna choose this, choose run, and see how long it takes. Uh, I have not turned on the GPS watch here in the city. I did outside at Newark Airport when I landed about four hours ago or so, I guess. Um, but usually it's tricky to get GPS signal here with all these tall buildings. Okay, so it took about 25, 30 seconds in total for the Garmin to find GPS. Uh, the Sunto is still blinking, but I started that behind a little bit. And in the case of the Chorus Pace, it's still at uh, one bar as well. So I'm gonna gotta keep on uh, cooking away. Now, while I've been waiting for the other two watches, the Garmin keeps kind of teetering back and forth on having signal and losing signal. You can see the red there and the green, so it has it, it loses it, it has it, it loses it. Uh, so that means as we go and we start, it's probably gonna be pretty rough, just that it's already like a warning sign there. Okay, it took three minutes and I finally got signal on the Sunto. Oh, I just lost it. I got it again. Okay, good. So, three minutes or so for signal in the Sunto. The Chorus Pace hasn't hasn't found anything yet. More update in that moment. Okay, five minutes into it here, and I finally got signal on the Chorus Pace. It keeps fluctuating between four and five bars, but I'm gonna call that close enough. Just like these ones are fluctuating on and off between having signal and not having signal. All the watches have signal now. Again, they're fluctuating a little bit on and off between having and not having. But we're just gonna get rolling here. I'm gonna simply start them. So starting that one. Starting the Garmin and starting the Chorus, and let's get running. So I'm mostly going to run roughly next to the bike lane as best as possible. Um, so like this little spot right here, it's kind of a dead man's, no man's zone there. Maybe dead man if I get hit by a car. And uh, I think it's be a little bit further away from the buildings, which might help a little bit here. But otherwise, just all the way up the 10 or so blocks up to uh, Central Park. Okay, so we wait for the stoplight right there. Pace stability's been sometimes good, sometimes so-so. Pace stability, I'm talking at basically how smooth the instant pace shows as you're running. So if you're running eight minutes a mile, nice and smooth, does it show eight minutes a mile? Or does it show nine minutes and seven minutes and six minutes and so on? In the case of the Phoenix 5 Plus, it's a little bit all over the map for like one or two blocks, then it goes back to being super smooth for the next. So, kind of gonna vary a little bit there, probably based on the buildings around it. Okay, so here we are at the uh, final block of the Gilded Forest Central Park now. Pass over out here real quick. Now we're in the Central Park. 
go ahead and see uh, how things might look on the map afterwards as to whether or not they clean up themselves in the Central Park or if things are looking pretty rough inside here. Okay, from a route standpoint, I'm just running the standard Central Park loop. Nothing too fast here. Uh, keeping it kind of easy after this morning, transatlantic flight as well as track workout yesterday. So this loop itself, it's roughly 10K plus the 10 or so blocks. Pace stability wise, things are looking pretty good on all the watches. Going down a slight hill right now, but it's sustaining about 705, 710 as I go down. So nice and even there, not jumping around very much. If you look at the other watches here, this is showing a little bit faster, 640 or so, but it's staying fairly consistent. Now I'm kind of flattening out, so it's gonna slow down a little bit, but overall not too shabby in terms of pace stability. <laughs> Just found a, a DCR reader out here that ran up to me. Lots of selfies, so we'll do that. Do <laughs> <laughs> the selfie oh, time yeah. running? Well, there we go. Besides, we're not the sun. <laughs> okay, proper photography side now. Go for it. Are you here for business or? Uh, yeah, some events. <laughs> but uh, I figured I'd get a quick run in before, before I crash yeah, the night. Man. Yeah. Yeah, crazy, busy man. Yeah. Crazy, busy man. It's all fun though. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, well, have a good one. Nice to see you. Just keep it going. Enjoy. No worries. <laughs> see ya. See ya. Nice meeting you. You too. Super nice guy. So cool when people say hi. So if you're familiar with Central Park, you know that at one end there's a bunch of a hill. And yeah, if you live in a hilly place, it's not all that bad, but here in Central Park, it's a solid hill. And I'm definitely feeling the pep in my step I had coming off the flight kind of disappearing now going up this. So time is catching up with me right now, that's for certain. I figure it's just after midnight or so my time. Long day. As far as distances go, the uh, Sunto and Garmin are within one one hundredth of a mile of each other. The Koros is 0 0.20 miles back, so just shy of a quarter mile back. It's hard to know if that's right or the others are wrong. Typically speaking, you wouldn't expect um, a watch to be short in the city because it's going to over basically drop the GPS points in a building, so it makes a longer track. But it's possible that the Koros did it right, and the Garmin and Sunta did it wrong, and thus they're over. We'll have to see once we get there. It's the intersection right there that I started at uh, for the Loop to Central Park, but I'm at 6.96 miles right now. Certainly I can't end there, so I'm gonna run the extra three one hundredths of a mile to wrap things up nice and even. Okay, so wrapping things up on the outdoor portion before we go inside and look at the files. Uh, the Sunto ended up at 7.04 miles. The Phoenix 5 Plus ended up at 7.01 by the time I pressed the stop button. And over here, the Coros Pace ended up at 6.90 miles. Um, now, I should mention that before I look at the files, I almost never start like where I started there. I usually walk to Central Park and start from here and go around and stuff. So um, I do that usually for a good reason. So we'll see if that reason's justified. Use the tracks look pretty, pretty crappy in there. So I'm gonna walk my way back and uh, let's go back inside and check out the data files. Here we are in the DCR analyzer. Uh, this is the tool that I use to go ahead and analyze uh, files across things. So I can analyze heart rate, cadence, power, pace, all that kind of stuff is in here. Uh, but for today, we're just focused on GPS tracks. Um, and you can see, starting off with the distance side of things down here in these summary sections, that uh, the Coros Pace was the shortest, 11.1K, the Phoenix 5 Plus, 11.28K, and the Sunto Trainer Wrist HR just above that at 11.32K. Uh, you can ignore the ascent zeroed out there on the Sunto Trainer value. 
That's simply because Symmetra doesn't properly put the total sent value uh, from the watch in that field in there uh, according to the standards. And so I don't uh, recalculate it because we want things to be exactly what the watch thinks they are. Uh, so anyways, looking at the starting points here, uh, you'll see that the Sunto and the Phoenix 5 start almost identically in the same spot. If we switch over to satellite view though, you will see that the Phoenix 5 Plus starts at the exact same point that I press the start button on the correct side of uh, the street. It then didn't necessarily track the correct side of the street, but at least it was the right side of the street. The Sunto was across the street. It really doesn't matter. We're talking just a handful of meters here. I then cross through Times Square, uh, and if we go back to map view, because it's a little hard to see with all the buildings there, um, you'll see that, you know, neither track is perfect. They're we meandering into buildings and stuff, um, but technically the Phoenix 5 is closest to the street. Like, if you had the ward points for who could draw within the lines, that's like the least sucky of them. Um, but you'll notice right here, though, the Coros paste didn't start till five blocks later, right? There's no purple line until we got all the way up here to 51st Street, then the Coros paste decides to start, even though it definitely was pressed start when it had all full signal on all of those bars. So not sure what the deal is there, not sure what big building is there that was upset. Um, all the watches, of course. Get into Central Park, the Coros paste crossed the street exactly where I crossed on the crosswalk. The other two were uh, splayed on either side a little bit. And then going into the park here, the Sunto actually was most correct on this little section, just right there, that corner and getting onto the main drive. Once we're on the main drive though, things are pretty darn similar. I mean, uh, I was on the inside lane here, and the Phoenix 5 Plus definitely plots this section the most correct, uh, minus this little bit right there in the trees, but otherwise on this roadway here, it's on the right, or the correct side of the road, the left side of the road, the other unit's on the wrong side of the road, but they're all on the road. Like, it doesn't really matter too much here. It's not gonna affect your distance uh, too much in this section here. We'll get up to the north side though where the hill was and you see as I come around this hill right there right where it says West Drive um, there's like a little bit of a rock cliff there and that's where we see the uh, Phoenix 5 plus go off into the woods the north woods to be precise um, and that's where it stays offset the entire way down uh, and the core space and the Sunto are like spot on each other um, usually even on the correct side of the street where the Phoenix 5 plus was off in the woods uh, most this way like you know, the lake it comes back in uh, and then it's a little bit back into the trees here but it's getting pretty close and then stays and pulls in right there like the rest of them onto the road. Uh, that's a, technically it's a GPS condition that can happen. I've seen it before on lots of different units. Not sure what the deal was going on there. Um, I've seen it across again multiple vendors but anyways it happened here so it is what it is. Uh, and then all three units finish up in the exact same spot uh, right there as we saw. So overall looking at like the GPS tracks I would say in Central Park going outbound, if you will, um, to the north, uh, go away scrolly thing, uh, that was definitely the Phoenix 5 Plus was the closest, but then coming back it was the least closed, um, and both the Sunto and the Coros Pace were very, very similar uh, throughout Central Park. Here in the city section, um, clearly this, the uh, Coros Pace was the least correct because it started five blocks late. Uh, it also had the least ideal map through that city section there, um, but on the Phoenix 5 side it was the closest to that street. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I'd say overall, I'd, I'd give like the two closest to the Sunto and the Phoenix 5 uh, in terms of their performance. Um, one can decide whether or not like being correct on the street outweighs being incorrect in the trees. I don't I don't really know. It's it's one, six, one, half a dozen, the other. Anyways, if you found this interesting, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom or the subscribe button. Plenty of goodness in the wearables department coming up over the next three or so weeks to be between now and the first of September. There is lots of new GPS watches that'll definitely pull true this year as well. Um, so I got plenty of goodness on the way here on YouTube and on the site. With that, have a good one. You and I, we're always on the